So today's topic is about healing. So let me just tell you, we are on our eight foundations of an abundant life series. Can we show that? So we are on week six. And our topic today is about healing, right? And then week seven next week, we're going to be talking about tithes. Tithing is a blessing exchange. And then the last one is serving and leading in excellence. So we have, so after this, two more to go, right? So if you guys miss the other six or other five before this, you can listen to our re recording. It's in YouTube. We have our YouTube channel, Wisdom Church of Manila. You can listen to Salvation in the Kingdom. We talked about how to bring the kingdom of heaven here on earth. Right? That's salvation in the kingdom. Second person of the Holy Spirit. We talked about the power of the Holy Spirit, which is the power of the tongue. Right? The power of the tongue. Then week three, we talked about the operation of faith. You got it. That's pretty much what, what it says, right? That's the operation of faith. And then week four, we talked about the authority of the believer. The power that you have inside of you because you are seated right next to Jesus in heavenly realms. And then uh, week five is getting direction from the Lord. A lot of you didn't expect that. We talked about worship. We talked about worship. That's, that's Who here was blessed and empowered by that one last time? Right? That's just so good. And if you, again, if you miss that, go back, listen to the recording. And, and ideally, you, you're uh, in a quiet place so that you can participate in the worship towards the end. So today, we're going to be talking about healing. How to minister to the sick. So we're going to be talking to you about how to minister. So teach you how to minister to the sick. Right? And at the same time, receive your own healing as well. Is that good? Who is expecting healing today? Yes? Okay, so we are going to be doing that today. A few assignment, uh, announcements before I, I get started. Dami pala nito, no? Wisdom groups. Let's go. We're going to be starting wisdom groups, ladies and gentlemen, on July. I said July 4, but July 3. So this Sunday, two weeks from now, after our church service, the wisdom groups are going to be here as well. So you don't have to go out and meet with people outside, right? We're going to have, we're going to extend another hour be here, you have the coffee, you have, you know, pagkain dyan, and then do the fellowship and do the learning together as a group. So we're going to be doing that again July 3. If you want to be part of a wisdom group, please make sure you register. Go to the registration desk and fill up this form so you're part of that. It's going to be every first and third Sunday of the month. First and third Sunday of the month. Next, we have... Wisdom Kids. Yeah, hey, I think they've, they've already started somehow, right? They don't have a program yet, but they're there. <laughs> um, don't worry, parents, it's air-conditioned, right? And it's uh, a clean place. But we're going to be officially starting next week. Ages, uh, kids ages 3 to 9 years old. Um, so we welcome you if you want to um, have your kids be not just taken care of, but be taught with the Word of God. Please sign them up. Again, there's a form that you, needs to, that you need to fill out so that they can be part of it whenever you come to church. And with those children ages 10 to 19, you're going to be part of wisdom groups now. So for example, I see these two uh, uh, handsome boys here. They're going to be part of wisdom groups already. So, they're, I think they're old enough to, to understand the teachings. Next, wisdom water baptism. Water baptism. So, for those who have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but have not experienced water baptism, we are going to be scheduling this one Saturday, not a Sunday, one Saturday in the month of August. So, fill this out so we can let you know, we can inform you, when we have 
the actual date. Is that good? All good? Yes, tapos na yung announcements ko. So, let's, you know what? Before, as I said, I don't know, you guys were here, you, you saw our first testimony, right? I'm going to show you our, another testimony of ours before I, I start the word. Let's go ahead and play that, please. Uh, biglang nag-break down yung body ko. Naman namin na yung SGPT ko pala is umabot na ng 404, which is ang normal is 45. They were praying for me na inaalaw ni God yan. Alam ko, sinabi sa akin ni God na inaalaw niya tong sickness ko. Talaga bang inaalaw ni God ang sickness? Bago ako na-introduce sa church, I was a former uh, operations manager sa Malolos, Bulacan ng madaming companies. Uh, last July of 2021, uh, biglang nag-breakdown yung body ko. Tapos doon namin nalaman, nung sinabi ng doktor na makakuha ko ng blood, blood uh, chem, uh, blood yeah. chem uh, nalaman namin na yung SGPT ko pala is umabot na ng 404, which is ang normal is 45. So, uh, yung mga doctors na nag-check up sa akin, inirecommend ako sa ibang doctors, which is, yun na yung pinakamataas na doktor. Siya yung president ng Hepatology Society of the Philippines. Noong time na nakita niya yung result ng akin, nakita niya na very peculiar kasi mataas yung SGPT, pero mababa yung bilirubin. So, walang... It doesn't match daw. Uh, ano. It doesn't match. Walang opportunity na mabigyan ako ng gamot. So, <laughs> three months akong naka-bed rest sa bahay. Uh, Noong time na yon uh, si Evie nasa Malolos, Bulacan, naiwan ko siya doon. Uh, she was sending me videos. Uh, Sabi ko, oh, panoorin mo to. Panoorin Baka makatulong. <laughs> Mga healing videos yon from the church. Pero, pero noong time na yon <laughs> even people from different churches nagpupunta sa bahay, uh-huh. they were praying for me, for my healing. Pero merong mga sentences, prayers nila na talagang ina-accept ko, which is yung... Which is hindi ako aware that uh, hindi siya aware. Kasi uh, magkalayo kami sa baliwag uh, siya, sa malolas ako. Uh, uh, yung, yung prayer and declaration sa akin ng mga leaders, and hindi ko naman sila inaano, pero siguro hindi, hindi sila aware na... They were aware. They were praying for me na inaalaw ni God yan, uh, tinuturuan ka, may uh-huh. timing niya, may breakthrough, uh-huh. after na suffering, may breakthrough. So, noong time na yun, doon ako naniniwala. And at that time, kung naalala ko sila pastora, sila pastor, meron silang uh, program which is sa mga gusto mag-business training, which is yung masterclass natin. Uh, and noong time na yun, uh, doon ako mas na-hook kaysa doon sa video yung sinesend niya. Uh, sinabi niya, ang, ang nag-send sa akin si MJ from Baguio, sabi niya, oh ito, uh, these people are teaching us uh, kingdom principles. Ako naman, so, sabi ko, ano yun? <laughs> so, ah. so yun, yun yung time at saka kami nag-decide na, oh, gusto namin makinig sa kanila. We want them to mentor us. So, merong moment na mag, mag, ano kami, mag-chat kami sa group chat with Pastora. Doon ako nag-chat na, doon ka umamin, uh, doon ako nagsabi na, Pastora, eto na siguro yung opportunity ko para magkaroon ng breakthrough kasi si God inaalaw. Alam ko, sinabi sa akin ni God na inaalaw niya tong sickness ko para sa breakthrough na ito. So, biglang sabi ni Pastora that time, No! Sabi niya ganon. God does not allow sickness. Sabi niya, and believing that may be the legal right of the sickness to stay. So, so, so napaano Parang ako? months and months na, oh, di ba? Oh, Tapos biglang someone na. spoke oh, oh. something na kakaiba sa oh, narinig niya. Sabi niya, mag-send siya sa akin ng, ng videos sa, know, uh, sa, sa YouTube. Niya. Tapos yung sinend niya video was the same video na sinesend ni Evie <laughs> three months ago. So, <laughs> na hindi niya pinapansin. Na, na hindi ko pinapansin. <laughs> Noong time na bago ko panoorin yun, uh, ang nangyari sa akin, mataas yung SGPT ko, nag-lock yung joke ko, uh, nagkaroon ako ng numbness sa ulo, so dumagdag pa, naging, 
Nagpacheck up ako sa neurologist. Nagpacheck up ako sa ENT. So, ang dami ng doctors at that time. Sabay ba na rin yung sinasabi? One day, hindi ko na kaya yung, ano, yung sakit. Tapos naalala ko na nag-send sila pastora ng video. That time, pinanood ko. Pero nung time na yun, that's what, that was the first time na na-renew ulit yung mind ko about dun sa tamang principle ng ano, na... Nagaling sa Bible. Nagaling sa Bible. Na, yung talaga bang inaalaw ni God ang sickness? Tingin, tingin nila hindi. Sabi ko, paano hindi inaalaw? Eh, ako may sakit? <laughs> Pero nung time na yun, pinaliwanag niya. Kung gusto mo daw malaman o ano, ano yung heart ng father ni God, tingnan mo yung anak niya, si Jesus Christ. Nag-inflict ba siya ng sin? Hindi. Nag-inflict ba siya ng suffering? Sickness. Hindi. Nag-inflict ba siya ng sickness? Hindi. So, anong ginawa niya? Binig- nagbigay siya ng provision, nagbigay siya ng healing. So, bakit mo iniisip na binigay Galing niya sa iyo yung sickness? Sa- so, doon na, 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 na nagkaroon ng eye-opening <laughs> moment. Oo, napaisip na mali ito ah. Mali itong ginagawa ko. Pero at that very moment, nung nagkaroon ng prayer, sinabayan ko yung prayer, yung declaration na wala akong sakit. At that very moment, nag- nag-lose yung jo, kinabukasan, hindi na ako nahihilo. After three days, saka pag-drive na ako. Progressive Ka- din siya. Kanong kabilis, o, oh, malinaw talaga. Kung sino si Jesus Christ sa buhay ko, kung ano yung gusto niyang ibigay. Yun yun yung tinanggap ko. So, parang from yung mindset na God allows suffering, na bago ng <laughs> God does not inflict yeah. pain and suffering. As you started to reject or rebuke, di ba yung parang uh, sickness. Tapos unti-unti na wala. Na hindi rin ma-explain din ng doctors na kasi. By the word of God, you will know God's will. You will know His promises. With God's will, plus your willing participation with the Holy Spirit, dun daw nagkakaroon ng miraculous things. Miracle talaga yung nangyari sa akin. It was, it was God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, who gives yeah. healing. Hindi sickness yung mini-inflict nila. Hindi rin yung sickness yung bibigay nila sa inyo. At kaya talagang magbigay ng healing instantly or even in yung illogical way. Kasi... Isa sa mga kingdom principles na natutunan namin is yung Power of the, um, the power of the mouth, declaring. declaring, and yung law of agreement. What you believe, what you, you declare, agree, what you agree, allow. you allow. Um, if you listen to people, mouth nila yun eh. If you listen to them and believe that what they say is true, it will be true to you. So kaya be careful who kung saan ka nakikinig. Ako, nakikinig ako sa spoken word of people at that time. Eh. So, sinabi ng doktor, may sakit ka, may sakit ka. Thankful ako sa mga tao na nag-step out to make the extra effort na isubo sa amin yung truth. Kahit na parang una is may resistance ka rin. Eh. Kasi iba yung nakasanayan mo siguro or iba yung uh, first exposure mo sa, sa sa word. So, parang pagka may, may bagong binigay sa'yo, feeling mo, Parang hindi nagmamatch. So, alin ba yung truth? Ko, ano ginawa ko? I commanded and, to, and, and told my body and my mind to conform. So, word ni God, to conform to the Spirit. round of applause for Brian and Evie. They're actually here. Tayo nga kayo para magpakita naman kayo. So this is how they look like. <laughs> you saw them in the video. If you have any more questions to them, you can ask them questions. But that's, that's, pwede na ako hindi magsalita, eh, no? You've learned a lot from that video. Anyway, so this is actually good but because a lot of the things that we're going to be talking about today is in connection with that. So again, healing and how to minister to the sick. Now, allow me to start with, can you see me? Can you see, um, is it light, light, bright enough, right? Parang ako yung malapit. Okay. Uh, I want to discuss to you uh, three foundations to healing. I, I know there's going to be a lot more. There's actually a lot more foundations that we can talk about when it comes to healing. But we're going to be focusing on three today, right? These are very applicable to us as believers. 
Okay, so the first one is sickness is from the devil and healing is from God. Very foundational, but I have to say this. Can you say this after me? Sickness is from the devil. Healing is from God. This is one of the foundations. You need to understand the heart of our Father God, right? God will never make you wish you, right, nor allow you to get sick. He will never make you wish you nor allow you to get sick, right? This is not the heart of God for you. Let's uh, uh, display John 10.10. 10. You guys are very familiar with this. It's one of our shirts. It's in one of our shirts, right? The thief comes only in order to what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. I came that they may have life and enjoy life and have it in abundance. This is what Jesus said. I came so that you experience an abundant life, right? God gave a very clear di distinction of what he does, Versus what the enemy does. If it's stealing, killing, and destroying, listen, that's from the enemy. If it's giving you abundance in your life, that's from me, says the Lord. It's very clear. Now, does, the, does sickness steal your joy? Answer me, yes or no. Yes. Before you go there, can I make a page. comment real quick? Yes. Because this is, there's a lot of, um, I'm not sure the word I'm looking for, uh, confusion debates in the church about God allowing sickness. Yeah. Mm. If you don't understand this point, you are probably giving legal right to the enemy. That's what we have. Yeah. Okay? Here is uh, how I explained it. Who are your fathers? Father, father. We have Happy a few Father's fathers Day. here, okay? Yes. I'm going to pick on one father. I want one father. Ito na lang. <laughs> father Kuya. Kakuya, right? As a Kuya father. Bong. Kuya Bong. You have, you have kids, right? Will you, when, if you see your child suffering, pero you say, you know, okay yan, matututo siya. How would you feel? Will you allow that if you have the power to stop it? No, I don't allow them to... Suffer. Suffer. This is the heart of us as dads. Mm. Right? Here on earth. How then can you think our Father in heaven who's so much better or gooder, gooder, is that a good word? <laughs> or better than us will allow sickness to us, his children. If us as a father will never allow sickness to our children. If you think, if you know the heart of our Father, you will understand this point. He is not the source of your sickness to teach you a lesson. We have an enemy. He's called the devil. For some reason, the church does not acknowledge that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he comes so that we may have life. If you understand that point, then, you, then this teaching and everything we say will make a lot of sense because it's about the heart of the Father. Does this make sense, church? I will let you go. Tapos magko-complain siya sa akin, overtime ako. <laughs> yeah, but that's so, that's so true. That's true. I mean, we said sickness steal our joy. Does sickness destroy your body? Yes. Right? Does sickness kill people? Yes. Right? Does sickness make you enjoy your life? No. Does it make you, does it bring abundance in your life? No, right? So it's very clear. It's very, very clear. Sickness is from the devil. Healing is from the Lord. And he already made that point very clear as well. So understand that this is a big lie from hell. And I want to say this again because this is a beginning for us to renew our mind. And that's all he had to believe, Brian, in that testimony. That's all he had to believe and in because of that renewal of the mind, the, see, the healing came. The healing came. Right? I hear the kids upstairs. <laughs> so, um, God cannot give you what he doesn't have. 
God's from heaven. Is there sickness in heaven? No sickness in heaven. So He cannot give you sickness unless God is from hell, right? He is from, from heaven. So He cannot give you sickness. Here's another question. Is sin from the Lord? Sin. We're not talking about sickness. Is sin from the Lord? No. Is God allowing you to sin as a Christian? No. So I would say that 99% of Christians know this, right? They would agree with me. Oh, definitely not, right? Sin is not from God. Definitely. He's not going to allow you to go into sin. Now, let me ask you, how did corruption, how did poverty, how did curses, how did sickness come into this world? Because of sin. When Adam and Eve sinned, before that, there's no corruption, poverty, there's no sickness, right? But when they sinned, it opened the door to all of these things. It opened the door to curses, to poverty, to sickness. And that's why if you hate sin, if you hate corruption, curses, toiling and sweating, if you hate murder, stealing, rape, then you should hate sickness as well. You should hate diabetes, arthritis, cancer, COVID. You should be hating these stuff because it's in the same area. Right? If God hates sin, and of course he does, God, of course, as well, naturally he hates sickness. He hates corruption, curses, toiling and sweating, poverty. And I hope that's, that we align our hearts to God's heart for us and to um, align our hearts with his heart about sickness. His heart about curses, his heart about poverty. But we're going to be focusing on sickness today because that's, that's our topic. But it's in the same line. And as what Brian said here, what you accept, what you tolerate in your life, it will stay in your life. So again, when you say, you know, pinahaya ng Panginoon ito sa buhay ko, para Maybe he wants me to get better. Maybe God is teaching me. Maybe God wants to build my character. Maybe God wants uh, me to be a better person. That's why this, I have this sickness, right? If you believe that, then you're tolerating it. And you're giving the sickness the right to stay in your life. So you gotta hate sickness just like how you hate sin. Number two foundation, and say this after me, Jesus healed all. He didn't choose. Acts 10.38, please. Acts 10.38. How God anointed and consecrated Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with strength and ability and power. How he went about doing good and in particular curing all, I want to highlight this phrase, curing all who were harassed and oppressed by the power of the devil, for God was with him. Now, let's start from the beginning. God, the Father, anointed Jesus, right, with the Holy Spirit. That's the beginning of that. He anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit. Are you guys anointed with the Holy Spirit as well? Yes. So you have that same power that Jesus received from God the Father, correct? Yes. So the Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that was in Jesus healing all is also inside of you, right? Now with the Holy Spirit, it says strength and ability and power. Because of the Holy Spirit inside of you, you carry strength, ability, and power to do what? Cure all. Cure how many? All. Sa Tagalog? Ano ba Tagalog ulit nito? Lahat. Walang tinira, kahit isa. Lahat. Walang exemption. Walang pinili si God. Walang. 
My notes are sticking. Matthew 8, verses 13 to 16. We're going to read that. 13, it says, Then to the centurion Jesus said, Go. It shall be done for you as you have believed. And the servant boy was restored to health at that very moment. 14, it says, And when Jesus went into Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying ill with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her. And she got up and began waiting on him. 16, it says, When evening came, they brought to him, brought to Jesus, right? Many who were under the power of demons. So where does sickness come from? From the demons, right? They were under the power of demons. And he drove out the, spirit, the spirits with a word. So Jesus fought the demons with what? Not physically. He didn't wrestle with them, right? He fought with the demons with the word. With the word. Jesus taught the people the word of God. He gave them understanding of the word of God. And then after that, gave them knowledge of the word of God. And then after that, healed all. Healed all, it says, and restored to, to health all who were sick. Cured all, healed all. The same word, all, lahat. Jesus didn't pick and choose. Foundation number three, and say this after me. It's a done deal. Yes. Isaiah 53, verse 4 to 5. Surely he has borne our griefs, talking about Jesus. This is in the Old Testament, right? Isaiah 53. Surely he has borne our griefs, our sicknesses, our weaknesses, our distresses, and carried our sorrows and pains of punishment. Yet we ignorantly considered him stricken, smitten, and afflicted by God as if with leprosy. Now, this verse, again, is talking about Jesus, right? And it says here that Jesus took all, took all what? Griefs, sicknesses, weaknesses, distress, carried all of our sorrows and pains of punishment. Now, Jesus did all of these things 2,000 years ago. It's a done deal, right? It's a done deal. He carried all of these things. Now, let me ask you, when Jesus died on the cross and carried all of these things, again, 2,000 years ago, did he carry 95% of all the sorrows and sickness and, and all that and weaknesses and then left 5% to you guys? Or maybe 50-50, hati tayo, Lord, sayo muna yung 50%, sa akin yung 50%. Did he, left, did he leave us with 50% of sufferings and sorrows and weaknesses and all that stuff? No. The Bible says Jesus took it all. Every pain, every sorrow, every sickness, every disease. He carried them all. Now the question is, why are you still carrying them? Why are you still carrying them? Verse 5, it says, But he was wounded for our transgressions. Again, Jesus, right? He was bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement needful to obtain peace and well-being for us was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. Past tense. We're healed and made whole. I'm going to read to you the uh, New Testament um, uh, Bible verse on this one as well. 1 Peter 2.24. This is now in the New Testament, right? It says, He, talking about Jesus again, personally bore our sins in His own body on the tree, the cross, as on an altar and offered Himself on it that we might die, cease to exist to sin, and live to righteousness by His wounds, you have been healed. Again, past tense. It's already done. 
So you're not going to pray and ask Jesus to heal you because it's already a done deal. He already paid for all of your sicknesses, past, present, and future. Everything on the cross 2,000 years ago. So again, you don't pray, Lord, please heal me. That's a waste of time. Because our Father God is probably saying, Anak, I already have. Ginawa ko na yung hinihingi mo. Isaiah 54, 17. So how, what do you pray then? Paano yun? I mean, I, I experience sickness still, right? I experience some challenges in my body. So how do I pray then? Let's, let's look at Isaiah 54, 17. It says, No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue which rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is from me says the Lord. I want to highlight this because, um, yes, weapons will still be formed against you, right? The enemy will come knocking at your door, right? The enemy will still come trying to see if you're open for something. In this case, sickness. How does that look like? Knock, knock, knock. How does that look like? Symptoms. So listen, if you're experiencing symptoms like a headache maybe or, or colds, right? Those are symptoms. Let me ask you, when you experience those things, are you already sick? No, not yet. That's actually the enemy knocking at your door, knock, knock, knock. Are you going to allow me to come in? And then you say, Naku! Magkakatrangkaso yata ako. There you go. That's your agreement right there. When you agree, what you, di what you did in the spirit realm, you open the door to the enemy. Come in, flu. Trangkaso, come in. Right? You just acknowledge it with your words. That's how it works. That's how the enemy knocks on your door. So if and when you get symptoms, understand that that's the enemy knocking on your door. Right? And sometimes, you know, when you go to a doctor and the doctor gives you all of the diagnosis, right? What are you going to say? And the doctor says all of the bad stuff most, most of the time, right? What's wrong with your body, right? And again, nothing wrong with that. But what are you going to do? How are you going to respond as a believer? This is again the enemy knocking at your door. Are you going to open up and say, Oh, nga po. Yeah, talaga, nararamdaman ko yan. Ah, okay, sige, may, may diabetes ako, may arthritis ako. May, like, you, you just agreed, right? But no. You got to just stand up and say, No, I do not accept that. Right? I am healed. I have received my healing 2,000 years ago. Right? Jesus paid for my healing, so therefore, I command your body to line up, just like what Brian said. That's why I said everything is there in that video. Panorin yo let, right? To line up, command my body to line up with the Word of God. Right? To line up with the Word that says, I am already healed. Right? That's how you respond. Because the enemy's goal is to get you into agreement. That's the key right there, is to get you into agreement. And as soon as you do, again, the door is opened. The door is open. Listen, as a believer in Jesus, right, you're never that sick that's trying to get healed. No, that's not who you are, right? You are the one that walks in divine health, right? You walk in divine health. And when sickness tries to come, tries to knock on your door, you say, get off me, right? You're not welcome in my body. That's the response. Because that's who you are as a believer. Yes, again, Isaiah 54, 17, we read, weapons will be formed against you, 
right? But it says, it shall not prosper. Hindi siya magtatagal. It's just a temporary thing in your body because you're there to reject. You're there to rebuke, right? It, yes, it's going to be formed, but again, it will not prosper. So again, instead of saying, Lord, heal me, what do you need to do? You have to enforce the healing that God had already given you. Enforce the healing by speaking, by rebuking the sickness, right? We're going to learn more. I'm going to give you specific steps later, okay? So apply natin to mamaya, but I'm just giving you some introduction on, on, on healing and what we're doing and what is really happening in the spirit realm with sickness. Understand that sickness is not just a physical thing. It's a manifestation of what is really happening in the spirit realm. Now, so you need to win the battle in the spirit right away, right? You do not allow that because once you allow the enemy to win in the spirit, then you lose, right? Then it comes out, it manifests in your physical. Okay, so let's continue. Let's talk about faith when it comes to healing. John 14, 12. John 14, 12, it, it says, I assure you, there we go. Most solemnly I tell you, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, he will himself be able to do the things that I do, and he will do even greater things than these because I go to the Father. Now again, this is Jesus speaking to his disciples, right? And he said that he will, he will be able to do the things that I do. What, what are these things that we're talking about? Well, the blind could see, the lame could walk, right? Jesus fed the 5,000. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, raising the dead. The deaf could hear, you know, healing and casting out demons and raising the dead. And Jesus said, you could do these things also. How? It says, if anyone steadfastly believes in me. So if you believe in Jesus, that's all you need, then you could do these things. Did it say a pastor need to be healing the sick, raising the dead? Did it say, oh, you got to be a leader of the church or a volunteer of the church? Hindi, di ba? What did it say? Believe. If you are a believer in Jesus, then you could do all of these things and more. And more. Mark 5, 24 to 35. Are you okay? Everybody is okay? Okay. Mark 5, 24, 35. And Jesus went with him, and a great crowd keep, kept following him and pressed him from all sides so as almost to suffocate Jesus, right? 25, says, it says, And there was a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years and who had endured much suffering under the hands of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was no better but instead grew worse. Okay, so let's stop there. So here's a woman, and he's been sick for what? How many years? 12 years. Right? And she spent all of her money going from one doctor to another, maybe getting, okay, another test and another set of tests. And just like what you did, Brian, right? You went to a lot of different doctors, right? And then what did the Bible say? It grew worse. Nothing happened. It grew worse. So this woman, she was sick, and not only sick, she was broke, right? She spent all of her money. And then 27, let's go there. It says, and she had heard the reports concerning Jesus. So he heard about Jesus in the good news, right? And she came up behind him in the throng and touched his garment. So she had heard about Jesus. And he, she heard about the good news of healing, right? And what did she do? And again, remember, this woman was sick. She was bleeding, right? And she was sick for, for 12 years. And you know what? In their culture at that time, women, 
especially when you're sick, especially when you're bleeding, you cannot go out there with a the crowd. That's a big no-no, right? That's really not um, acceptable in their culture. But what did she do? She went out, right? She went out anyways and pushed through the crowd, Push through the crowd. And again, remember Jesus' scenario in the beginning. It says, a great crowd kept following him and pressed him from all sides so as almost to suffocate him. Now just imagine for a minute the scenario. I don't think we're just talking about a couple of hundred people here. Maybe thousands, right? Pressing through Jesus and like wanting to be, to touch him maybe, right? And to just to be, close to Jesus. And so this woman, that's what she did as well. She was sick. She was bleeding. Push through the crowd. Listen, on a scale of 1 to 10, how motivated is this woman? 11. <laughs> right? I mean, I want my healing. And I'm going to go get my healing no matter what. That's the attitude, right? That was her, hat, or her attitude. Now, 28, verse 28, it says, For she kept saying, if, only, if I only touch his garments, I shall be restored to health. Now, this is like before she even got to Jesus, right? She was saying that, if only I could just touch his garment. If only I could get to him and touch his garment. Not even Jesus, Garment lang, yung damit lang, right? Not even Jesus. Now, I hope you caught that word saying. She was confessing. She wasn't thinking. She was saying. She was opening her mouth, confessing what she wanted to see, right? Remember when we talk about the authority of the believer? Without a declaration, there's no manifestation. That's what she did. She declared what she wanted to see. Now, 29, it says, immediately. Say immediately. Immediately, her flow of blood was dried up at the source, and suddenly she felt in her body that she was healed of her distressing ailment. Instantly healed. She touched Jesus' garment, and again, instantly she was healed. 30, it says, And Jesus, recognizing in himself that the power proceeding from him had gone forth, turned around immediately in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? I'm going to continue on, until the end, and then I'm going to explain. 31, it says, And the disciples kept saying to him, You see the crowd pressing hard around you from all sides, and then you ask, Who touched you? Because there were many people touching him, right? So you could not even recognize. Now, 32, it says, Still, he kept looking around to see her who had done it. 33, But the woman, knowing, that, knowing what had been done for her, Though alarmed and frightened and trembling, fell down before Jesus and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith, talking about faith, right? Your faith, your trust and confidence in me, springing from faith in God, has restored you to health, has healed you. Go in into peace and be continually healed and freed from your distressing bodily death. With Jesus, with so many people touching him, felt the power came out of him. So he didn't know who touched him. So Jesus didn't make a decision to heal the woman. He didn't know, right? So question is, who decided if she was going to be healed? Who decided when she's going to be healed? Who decided how she's going to be healed? Who decided where she's going to be healed? Not Jesus. She did. With her faith, right? So if her faith could heal her, 
your faith could heal you. You decide if you're going to be healed or not. You make a decision if, when, where, and how you're going to be healed. It's in you. It's not up to the Lord. It's not God choosing, okay, this person I'm going to heal, ito hindi, ito mabait to, sige, heal diyan, this person, no. No! God is not choosing. Because what? Because He had already given. He gave it already. The manifestation of your healing doesn't depend on God. So if you're thinking that he's delaying your healing, if you're thinking that he's withholding your healing, if you're thinking that he's depriving your healing, those are lies. Healing is already in your possession. It's already inside of you. And maybe you just need to learn how to know how to activate that healing so that you, it manifests in your body, it manifests in your life. It's the knowledge, right, that's missing. And that's why we're in this conversation today. Can I say something about this? Wow, okay. Hello. I've been Tahinika. quiet for a while. Yes. Uh, when you go back home this week, I meditate on these verses. There's so many kingdom keys here. There's so many. There's a lot of but kingdom keys. But it's not the keys. time to talk about it, yeah? No, I just wanted to talk. Okay. You have to keep in mind, this woman could have been stoned to death just by going out because of her condition. Yeah. She wanted it so bad that she was willing to take any risk, even death. How badly do you want your healing? How badly do you want your prosperity? How badly do you want your restoration in your relationships? Yeah. Right? There's a few keys that I want to mention. One, she said, if only I could touch him, the helm of his robe, I will be healed. She said it. How many times have you seen de declaring what you want in your life? Number one, this is the first key. Number two, she actually did something. She didn't just declare, 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 and then sit and on waited your, for Jesus to come and waiting to for house. Jesus. Or, or, I was going to say sit on your butt, but okay, that's good too. <laughs> that just sit down and do nothing. No, you need to do something. What yeah. will you have to do? Listen to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will tell you what to do next. Next, she obeyed and she fought for it. This is what we call violent faith. Yeah. This is what we call take it by, and, uh, the, take, the violent take it by force. Yeah. These are the other terms of it, right? And number three, because of her faith and belief, there was no doubt, there was no wishy-washy, oh, will this work? Will this won't work? Should I do it? Should I not? Oh, it doesn't work the first time. Maybe it doesn't work. She didn't do that. She just went at it, and then the power of the Holy Spirit, God will cooperate with you. You have to do your part, and God will do his part. And that's how the manifestation of her healing, of the restoration of your family, restoration of your finances, etc., will be healed. It will be manifested. Manifest in your life. These are the keys, the kingdom keys that are being um, taught right now. Just some, yes, but those are good. Does this make sense, church? Yes. Does this make sense? That. Okay. Thank you for that. <laughs> Let's talk about um, Oh no. Matthew 17, 14 to 21. Let's talk about faith more. Uh, more. Uh, 14 it says, And when they approached the multitude, a man came up to Jesus, to him, kneeling before him and saying, I'm missing my other page again. Saying what? Okay, Lord, do pity and have mercy on my son, for he has epilepsy, is moonstruck, and he, he suffers terribly, for frequently he falls into the fire and many times into the water. 16, it says, I brought him to your disciples, and they were not able to cure him. 17, it says, and Jesus answered, oh, you unbelieving warped, wayward, rebellious, and thoroughly perverse generation. How long am I to remain with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him here to me. 
So this was Jesus. No, say this. This story is about faith. Say it again. This story is about faith. It's about faith. And what was Jesus saying? Jesus was speaking to his disciples. Now, these were the people who were walking with him, talking with him, spending a lot of time with Jesus, right? And then what happened? He said, what happened? You are experiencing or having unbelief. He was rebuking them for the unbelief. 18, it says, and Jesus rebuked the demon. It came out of him, and the boy was cured instantly. So the disciples weren't able to cure the child, but Jesus did, right? So something there, Jesus knew something that disciples didn't know. Let's read 19, it says, Then the disciples came to Jesus and asked privately, Why could we not drive it out? They were puzzled, right? What happened, Jesus? Why could not we drive the demon out? 20, it says, he said to them, because of the littleness of your faith. That is your lack of firmly relying trust. Littleness of faith or lack of faith or unbelief, right? That's what Jesus said. And then continues on, he said, for truly I say to you, if you have faith that is living, not a dead faith, Right? If you have faith, like a grain of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to yonder place, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. If you have faith like a grain of a mustard seed, how does a mustard seed look like, and how small is this? Can we, can we show that? Oh, there. That's small. It's smaller than a mango seed. You guys are more familiar with mango seed, right? It's smaller than a mango seed. That's what Jesus is saying. Listen, if you have this kind of faith, you will move mountains and nothing will be impossible to you. Wow. That's a huge promise. Can you imagine the meaning of the power to move mountains? This is talking about moving and speaking to your mountains to anything that is a hindrance in your life. To anything that is hindering you to live an abundant life. To, your, to sickness, to poverty, to lack, to strife, to relationship problems. All of these things, these are mountains, right? And you can say to your mountains to go away and be moved away. That's the kind of power that Jesus was talking about. If you have that kind of faith, that's small. As small as a mustard seed. Church, this is talking about pure faith. Pure faith. Even though it's small as a mustard seed. We're talking about pure faith. It's faith with zero doubt. It's faith with no shadow, with no hint of a doubt. That's pure faith. So if you're like speaking and declaring something, declaring your healing, but then later on after your prayer, right, you go out of your room and then you start talking to your friend and then your friend saying, oh, kumusta na yung sakit mo? Ito nga, eh, masakit pa rin yung katawang ko. And so you're just giving declaration of sickness. You just contradicted what you said. That's not pure faith. Pure faith is there's no hint. There's no shadow. Zero doubt in your mind because you're consistent wherever you go whatever you do you're speaking healing you're speaking restoration your conversation is about restoration it's not about sickness and you don't want to be watching those movies or 
series that has sickness and all that stuff. Because again, that's going to be contrary to what you're believing for. That's pure faith. That's pure faith. Let's look at Luke 8, 2 to 3. Now, some people mention about immediate healing and some people mention about um, progressive healing. So what is it, right? Immediate. I would say 80% of healing in the Bible are immediate. We're immediate, right? Immediate, instant, right? When Jesus laid hands on the sick, he didn't say, okay, my son, you will be healed one week from now. You know, one month from now, check your, check your eyes, check, check your legs. You will walk a month from now. He didn't say that, right? When he touched somebody's eyes and, and he spoke healing to someone, it's instant, immediate healing. However, let's look at Luke 8, 2 to 3. It says, and also some woman who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases, Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had been expelled. Verse 3, it says, And Joanna, the, the wife of Chusa, Herod's household manager, and Susanna and many others, who ministered to and provided for him and them out of their property and personal belongings. Now, I want to highlight this word cure. This word cure is from the original Greek word that means healed through time. It's progressive. Right? So somehow Brian's testimony is progressive, but it's still fast, right? Like at that moment, his lock, his jaw was unlocked. At that moment, when he received the revelation, he regained some strength. But then on a daily, as, as the days went by, he became stronger and stronger. And then he, um, up to the day that he's able to drive and go out and do normal things, right? That's also still fall in the progressive mode, right? But still, in a way, that's faster than how many months? Three months of being bedridden. So there is such thing as immediate and there is such thing as progressive. But you have to understand that the heart of the Father for you is instant, is immediate. However, Right? However, if you believe that it's going to be progressive, then it's going to be progressive. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's okay. Right? If you believe that it's going to be instant, then it's going to be instant. There are some, some things, some factors that causes delay in the manifestation of your healing. I'm going to give you a few. The first one, again, God meets your faith. So if you believe that it's going to be progressive, now God will respect that and say, okay, it's going to be progressive for you. He respect your faith, right? Second one, your understanding of the word of God. You know, sometimes if you have a different understanding of the word of God, just like again, Brian, his understanding before was God is allowing this in my life. So that's why the healing took a long time, right? Until he changed his mindset, his understanding of the word, that's when he started receiving the healing. But the healing was already there, right? He was just not receiving the healing because of the wrong understanding. So that's the, that's the second one. The third one, and I want to highlight this, and I think this is very important, and please pay attention. Some not, sometimes we're not able to receive from the Lord. We're not able to receive our healing, even blessings, I would say, right? Because of some of the junk that we have in our minds and in our hearts. What am I talking about? Let's, let's read this. Hebrews 12, 15. Hebrews 12, 15. And this may cause delay of the manifestation of your healing. And from experience, right? Just from praying from people and all that, you know, fear, bitterness, unforgiveness of the heart, resentment. Yes, they are emotional, but they also manifest in the physical through sickness. So here it says, Hebrews 12, 15, it says, Exercise foresight and be on the watch to look after one another to see that no one falls back 
from and fails to secure God's grace. So, okay, do not fall back from God's grace, it says. His unmerited favor and spiritual blessing in order that no root of resentment, rancor, bitterness, or hatred shoots forth and causes trouble and bitter torment and that many become, become contaminated and defiled by it. What are we talking about here? Bitterness, unforgiveness, resentment, hatred. These things defiles your heart, contaminate your heart, right? And when your heart is defiled, when your heart is contaminated, you will fail to secure, the Bible says, right? You will fail, fail to secure God's grace in your life. You're not going to be able to receive his unmerited favor and spiritual blessing, it says. And this includes your emotional healing. This includes your physical healing. Every aspect of your life. So that's another factor. And again, that's something that I see, you know, with many people that we pray for or that we pray over. It's not because, you know, they don't know. They know, but they choose to hold on to resentment. They choose to hold on to unforgiveness. They choose to hold on to hatred that actually blocks the healing to happen. Let's pull up Hebrews 10.23. Hebrews 10, 23. So again, if you don't receive your healing immediately, like it doesn't manifest in your body immediately, it doesn't mean that you're not healed. It's already there. The healing is there. It just needs to manifest. It needs to show up. In Hebrews 10, 23, it says, So let us seize and hold fast and re retain without wavering the hope we cherish and confess and our acknowledgement of it. For he who promised is reliable, sure, and faithful to his word. It says, let us hold fast and return without wavering. Do not go back and forth. It's the same example. You're speaking, you know, when you're in your prayer time, you're speaking about your healing, you're talking about your healing, but then when you're outside of your prayer time, you're talking about your sickness. That's called wavering. Right? You're going back and forth. You're moving forward, and then you move back backwards. And then you move forward and backwards. That's wavering. It says, do not waver. Don't go back and forth. Even though you're not seeing it yet in the physical, start thanking him because you know you already have the healing. You have received the healing already. So let me tell you, let me share with you a confession. Open your mouth every day. And again, this is for those, you know, uh, uh, I prayed for healing, but it's not manifesting yet. What should I do? Right? Do not waver. What do you say? Do this, say this confession. It says the healing anointing. Can you, can you repeat this after me? The healing anointing has entered my body. It's causing every pain and sickness to leave. And bringing restoration to every part of my body. Because by his stripes, I have been healed. That's a good declaration. And if you could just say that over and over and over, how many times a day? And listen, we're not just talking about physical healing here. Any healing that you need, emotional healing, right? Right? Mental healing, you know, there's this thing that keeps on popping in my head every single time. Depression, worry, anxiety, all that stuff. This, confess it. Confess it every moment you get, right? Now, let me talk to you um, about laying on of hands and just really quickly because I want to, we want to do some activation here tonight. Okay, Mark 16, 13. 13. And they returned to Jerusalem and told the others, but they did not believe them either. Afterward, he appeared to the 11 apostles themselves as they reclined at table. And he reproved and reproached them for their unbelief, for their lack of faith, and their hardness of heart. Because they had refused to believe those who had, sent, who had seen him and looked 
at him attentively after he had risen from the dead. So this is talking about Jesus when he was already resurrected from the dead, right? And he said to them, go into all the world. This is asking in application to us is going to our neighborhood, right? Going to where God had placed you and preach and publish openly the good news, the gospel to every creature of the whole human race. 16, it says, And he who believes, who adheres to and trusts in and relies on the gospel, and him whom it sets forth and is baptized will be saved from the penalty of eternal death. But he who does not believe, who does not adhere to and trust in and rely on the gospel, and him whom it sets forth will be condemned. Now, 17, it says, And these attesting signs will accompany those who, who believe. Again, if you are a believer, these are the things that you are empowered and equipped to do. It says, in my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new languages. They will pick up serpents. And even if they drink anything deadly, it will not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will get well. Church, you need to understand you're not the healer right? You are not the healer. Healer is not your works. It's God's works, right? They are the works of God, but God needs you. God needs you to be his hands. So you're not the healer, but you are the hand layer. God, you will use your hands to lay your hands on people to get well to receive their healing. That's what we're here for, right? As believers, we're called, empowered, and equipped to do that because you have the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you. So he's not really looking for ability, but he's looking for availability. So you don't have to do this as a full-time job. You know, if, if there's any opportunity at work, you know, in school, whatever, in your business, if you have the opportunity to pray, you know what, say, you know what, pray tayo. Let me pray for you and lay hands on them and command the healing to flow. That's the kind of power that you carry. When you lay hands on someone, the healing anointing flows from you, from the inside of you, to the body of the person. You carry a healing anointing inside of you. Acts 14, 8 to 10. You got to show your faith. And this is what it says. Now in, in Lystra, a man sat who found it impossible to use his feet, for he was a cripple from birth and had never walked. Never walked before, right? Verse 9, it says, he was listening to Paul. As he talked, and Paul, gazing intently at him, observing, seeing, he was seeing that he had faith to be healed. So this man's faith can be seen. Your faith can be seen, right? And then verse 10, it says, Paul shouted at him saying, stand erect on your feet. And he leaped up. He lip, leaped up. My notes. And walked. And walked. So this man's faith was shown. Paul asked him to stand up, something that he was not able to do before, to show his faith. So as for us believers, when we pray for someone, it's important to ask that person to show his or her faith. By what? by asking them to do something that they could not do before. This one is an example. I want to go back to, because um, I want to make sure you understand about laying on of hands. Do you understand? Is this laying on of hands? Yes or no? You sure? I'm laying on my hands. Laying on air. <laughs> Where are you? Not Actually, <laughs> this is not laying on of hands. So, you know, when you go out like this, that's not laying on of hands. Mm. It's not laying on air. Laying on of hands, correct, is a touch. When you're laying hands yes. on the sick, you need to touch. There's a transference it's of a anointing. Of transference. It's a principle of transference on the touch. Yes. It's not like this. You're touching. 
especially the part of the body that needs healing. Yes. When, when uh, Pastor Sal said that you have the healing anointing, you have to know that and believe that. You do have the healing anointing because the healing anointing comes from Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is in you. And the Holy Spirit is the exact replica of Jesus. Therefore, the anointing of the Holy Spirit in you and what you are passing on is the anointing of healing through the laying on of hands, which is touch. Yes. Does this make sense, church? Yes. Okay. Yes. So this is the last part. I'm we're just going to do this quickly because after this, we're going to do activation. I'm going to give you steps to ministering healing. Okay. So I'm going to give you step one to four. And this is how you do when you need to pray for someone, right? Or pray for yourself. Listen, as believers, you pray for yourself. You lay hands on yourself, right? You pray for healing for yourself. So the healing anointing is flowing from the inside of you. Number one, what do you need to do? You have to speak to the sickness and command it to leave. Right, command the sickness to leave. If you know the sickness, mention the sickness. I would say, for example, let me just use an example, headache, right? I would say, headache, I command you to leave this body right now. It could be as Oh ikaw na lang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, okay, so Saldi, so I say, okay, I speak to that, and I can point it, but do not touch yet, right? Pointing it as say, I speak to this part of your body right now. I command this headache to leave now in Jesus' name. That's the first step, right? The second step that you need to do is speak to that part of your body, that part of his body, right? And demand it to line up with the word of God. So the next step. This head, I speak to your head right now, and I command it, demand it to line up with the word. You have been healed. Jesus paid for your healing 2,000 years ago. And also from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, the entire body, I demand your body to line up with the word of God, that you have been healed. So the first one is speaking to the sickness. The second one is speaking to the body. You get the difference, right? Third step. Okay, the third step now is you need to release the anointing by laying on of hands, right? So now I will use my hand and touch gently. <laughs> gently and say, I release the healing anointing right now to your head. And to all parts of your body right now, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus, this healing anointing flow now in Jesus' name. Healing anointing heals your body right now, heals your head right now in Jesus' name. So that's the third step, and you laid hands, right? And just see yourself, see the transference, right, of the healing anointing from you to this person right now right now right and then the fourth step you have to check now in this case i would ask so how's your headache i'm healed <laughs> on a scale of one to ten gano pa kasakit two two may natira right may, how was it before nine so from 9 to 2, good progress, right? But what do you do? Parang doctor's checkup lang yun. But what do you do? You don't leave it like that. Hindi pwedeng may natitira, di ba? Let's do it again. You don't you say, do it again. okay, next, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> 2, let's do it again, right? And then you say, again, the same process. I speak to the headache right now. Yung 2 na natira, out. I command you to leave this, this head right now in Jesus' name. So back to, back to the step one. Back to step one. Commanding it to leave. Command. And then I demand this body. I demand your head right now 
to line up with the word of God. You have been healed 2,000 years ago. Jesus paid for your healing. So you are healed right now in Jesus' name. I'm not touching it. I'm not touching, right? You have been healed. So now let the healing anointing flow. Let healing anointing flow right now in Jesus' name. And heal your body, not just this head, but every single part of your body, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. Let healing flow right now in Jesus' name. Kumusta po? Tu pa rin. <laughs> so what do you do kung ganon? Um, you can say, you know what, you are already healed. What you can do is continue confessing. Remember that confession? Right? Continue confessing on a daily basis. I'm healed. I'm healed. I, sometimes it takes confession. Sometimes you just need to ignore. You know, a lot of times for me, it works for me. I ignore. And as soon as I ignore, hindi ko na binigyan ng attention, right? It actually just dissipates. So what happens? Here's another question. Because I hear someone here, you know, nag, nag ask ng question. What? Someone here says, Pano if it's something you can't check, like, you know, uh, diabetes that you right. can't check right now? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't check, yun, just take yeah, it by faith and do the confession on a daily basis. Right? That confession that we shared. I am healed. Jesus paid for my healing 2,000 years ago. I walk in divine health. So take I it by faith. I receive my healing right now in Jesus' name. Okay, are you ready for activation? Let's do activation. Um, let me ask first. Who here has maybe like um, a pain a back pain, a headache, any kind of thing that, that you want to be prayed for. Wow. Wala. Wala. No, Honey, for, for real. Wrong topic ngayon. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? No one needs any kind of healing prayer or any, any sickness, any disease. Paano tayo mag activate kung wala tayo yung pray <laughs> Are you guys serious? Oh. Don't be si, shy. Si Papa Danilo. You know, do you yeah. remember the story of, yeah. remember the story of the woman who was bleeding yeah. the first thing? Next, let's do this. Everybody stand up. Okay, yes. Let's go Everybody down. stand up. Everybody stand up. Okay. What kayo mag I'm not gonna call you to come down here. Yeah. You, you're staying I, there. I think you're they are scared there. that you'll come up. Yeah, yeah. You're staying okay. there. You're staying on your seat. Okay. So again, I'm going to ask the question. There's any pain, any allergy, any sickness, any disease, any, any even um, yung pangangalay, yung ganon. Anything that's discomfort, any discomfort in your body. Sino yung may ganon? Taas yung kamay. Wow. Ay, pala eh. Ano nangyari? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have those. Okay. Now, tingnan nyo, tingnan nyo. Raise your hand, raise your hand. Just keep your hands up. Tingnan okay. nyo muna, okay. Okay. So, can, can anyone who is not raising your hand, approach. right, approach those who are raising their hands? Ayun. Can two Kayo or more be? Kayo yung magpe-pray. Kayo yung magpe-pray. Huh? Yeah, can two or more? Because it looks like there's more people. Hindi, isa lang. One isa to lang? one. One to one. Okay, one yeah. to one lang. Okay. So, Please keep raising your hand until someone approach you to pray for you. Sino, sino? There's people here. Are you How guys come moving? The, the, the church doesn't want to approach and activate. <laughs> Yung mga walang, Can uh, someone go here? Volunteers this is, go. This is the practical side of yes. the teaching. This is where you'll internalize it and becomes part of you. Sino pa? Sino pa? Someone approach over here. There's a few people here. Yeah. So you will be praying for him, right? Okay. So, oh, someone here, Dito. please. Someone here. Joe. We have pain. Okay, good. Ay, ayan. John. Ay, hindi. Babay. Uh, I need. Uh, si Sis mommy John. over here. Is someone with her? Ikaw? Are you raising okay. your hand, yeah, Fred? Uh, no? Don't raise your hand if uh, someone's with you already. How about Joanne? Are you raising your hand? Uh, Mr. No? Mark Lane is here. Pray ka di, ka mag Can someone sa be with Mark? Yes, step out in faith, guys. This is this is your opportunity to apply. Amera na, hindi siya. There's no one with uh, yeah. Okay, good. Oh, she needs prayer then. Si Scott. Does everybody Ikaw. who needs prayer for, pray for healing her? has uh, someone pray praying for, for them? Meron pa. Are we good? Meron pa. Joanne needs prayer. Okay. 
Uh, Sis Irene, can you pray for Joanne? Who else? Who else need? Everybody? Meron na? So Ian, you're with Mark. Okay, ah, dito, 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 dito. One more. Who's available to pray? Na wala pang ano. Wow. Does everybody have a partner? A partner? <laughs> partner bang tawag dito? A prayer partner. Ikaw, a prayer tabi ka warrior. Ikaw, tabi ka sa kanya. Ito sa kanya. Yeah, ka. <laughs> yeah. Yan. I'm, I'm go- don't do don't start yet, okay? I'm going to give you the steps and we're going to do this we'll together. Do this together as a church. We're going to do this together. Sino pa yung need ng prayer na wala pang naka-assign? Who else? Pero wala good. pang naka-assign? Everybody is okay? Neil, you need someone? Oh, nag-stretch ka lang. No one's praying for you? No one's praying. Figure it out. You're part of the volunteer. <laughs> Call someone. Pray Call for someone. me. Call someone. Pray for me. Grab someone to pray for you. Yun. There. Be like the woman. Just like, just grab them. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's do this. So now, ask the person, ano yung kailangan niyang prayer? Ano yung masakit? Ano yung nararamdaman niya? Ano yung sickness? That's the first step muna. Ano yun? Yes. Ano yan, that shoulder. Okay. So, alam nyo na, ha? Okay? So, you know. You know already. The next step. <laughs> Ready for the next step? So, the next step is we are going to command the sickness to leave the body. So, in Tagalog, ano ba yun? Palayasin yung sakit. So, alimbawa, um... Headache. A- alis? Yung ba yun? Layas? Lumayas ka sa katawan na to in Jesus' name. Ganun lang ah, simple lang. He- headache leave right now in Jesus' name. Simple, right? Command it to leave. Don't touch yet. Don't touch yet. Okay, go, go. Okay. Okay, next step. You command the body to line up with the word of God, right? Sabi, sabi sa Biblia, you are he already healed. So I command your body to align with the word of God right now in Jesus' name. Go. So you Okay, last step. Lay hands. Yang mga hands nyo. Anointed. Take your hand, right? And lay it on that part na masakit or may sickness. And just say, let healing anointing flow right now in Jesus' name. Hawakan mo na siya. Let healing anointing flow right now. In Jesus' name, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, healing flow now. Healing anointing flow now in Jesus' name. And then check. If you can check it, ask the person, masakit pa ba? Do something that he couldn't do before. Taas mo yung kamay mo. By faith. No shadow of doubt. <laughs> no unbelief. Okay, who here got their healing? Sino yung naka-experience? Back? Back pain? Back pain. Amen, ano amen. Back pain. Ba, dami well, back pain na, mommy back pain. We have an anointing pain. of back pain healing right now. <laughs> anointing Amen. of back pain healing. Headache? No more headache. Amen. Amen. Woo-hoo! Thank you, Lord. Ano pa? What? It, 
Shoulder. Okay. Wala na? Wow. Shoulder pain. Shoulder pain. Amen. Pain. Thank you, Lord. Dami na palaya sa ano pa? Headache. What else? Knee pain. Wow. Who All here? those pain, no more in Jesus' name. Any weight loss? Any weight loss? <laughs> <laughs> Did wow. you ask for it? <laughs> ano pa? Anyone else? Okay, so I think we're good. <laughs> Alis na ako. <laughs> Yay! Thank you, Lord. Um, yeah, you can sit down now, please. Just allow me to pray for you. Lord, thank you for all the healing experiences that, um, that's here in this room today. And Lord, I know this is just the beginning. I declare this activation in each and every one today. They will continue. They will continue to apply this in their lives. They will lay hands on the sick. They will lay hands on themselves. And the healing anointing will flow, will flow out of them, Lord God. Lord, we thank you for this. We thank you for this experience. And we praise you, Lord, and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.